guys, welcome to lesson two. In this lesson, we're going to create a simple application with two buttons. We click one button, we'll see a pop-up. And we click the second button, we'll see another JFrame. So another window that opens up in which we could put text, uh, text fields, buttons, etc. if we wanted to. Let's get started. So in this particular project, well, this project is going to be the live session project again. So we're going to be working in our com.mycompany.live session package. I have another file here. I'm just going to go ahead and delete that. This is going to be like our main working project for this course. So we've got live session right here. And one interesting thing about this project is we're going to be working in two files, but we're going to start here by importing. So we're going to import our swing library. So we have Java X dot swing dot star. We've got Java uh, dot AWT. And this is going to help us with some of our functionality involving buttons. So uh, particularly these next two lines, we have Java dot AWT dot event dot action event. Action event is going to be a button click. And we're going to have an action listener that basically allows our buttons to listen for clicks or to react to clicks. Um, and that's going to be the next, what's going to be our next line. So that's the reason why we're importing uh, both of these packages right here. And then we're also going to import a constant from a, uh, a class that we're working with. So Java X dot swing dot window constants. Dot exit on close, which we've actually seen before in our first lesson. So again, swing is what we'll be using each time, more or less. Uh, AWT is used to help us work more with buttons. Action event is going to basically allow us to initiate some action when a button is clicked. An action listener is going to allow us to um, give a button the ability to initiate some action when it is clicked. And we'll see more about that later. So anyways, I probably misspelled something right here. Oh, it's window constants. OK. All right, cool. So let's move on. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create a, a new JFrame. That's going to be uh, this app right here. So this thing right here is going to be what we're going to create now. So we're going to have uh, JFrame frame equals new JFrame or new f yeah new JFrame, and we can pretty much call this whatever we want. We can say uh, hello world or hello um, because this text here at the moment doesn't matter. We're going to set a title. So we're going to say frame dot set title uh, simple application. So in our previous lesson right here was where we set the title, but here we're going to override that and we're just going to call it a simple application. And that's going to appear right up here. So that's our title. Now next what we want to do is set the size. So remember it's going to be width and height. So set size. Uh, our width is going to be 300 pixels and our height is going to be 200 pixels. So 300 and 200. Now next we are going to write a line that we haven't seen before. Frame.setLocation uh, relative to and then inside here we're just going to put null. And if you noticed, when we first opened up this application, it actually opened up in the center right here. And that's because of this line of code. Now, one of the, there aren't like, I mean, opening up the application in the center isn't super important, but it, it does kind of improve the user experience because as soon as they open it up, it's what's, as soon as a user opens up the application, it's what's directly in front of them and they can get started working. So it's not super important, but that's what this line of code does. Now, next we're gonna have frame dot set uh, default close operation. And if you remember, this was, and we're gonna have exit on close as the parameter. And again, we saw this in our previous lesson. And basically what this meant is that when this X button is clicked right here, the entire application closes. So now that we've done that, we're going to do a few things. So first of all, we're going to create something called a panel. So we're gonna do J panel. We're gonna create a J panel object panel equals new J panel. And what a panel basically is, is if you look at our application, it's like a sub container. 
So we can have many panels in within a frame. So this panel is going to be inside this frame. And right now we're just going to have one panel. This is more just to kind of illustrate this concept rather than, rather than because we're going to have multiple uh, subcomponents. But basically, if we have a complex user interface, we have some buttons here, form elements here, some more buttons, we could create like three different panels to store them all in. So it basically allows us to organize uh, different elements or different or basically make groups of different elements that we want to put in our frame um, so that we can kind of work with them as groups. Basically, it's an organizational tool. So we're creating a panel, and these buttons are going to be inside this panel. So what we can do is we can say frame.getContentPane.addPanel. So we can think of the content pane as basically this part of the frame where we can put things that are useful. And to this content pane, to this area where we can put content, we're going to add this panel, which as we said, is a sort of subcontainer for whatever elements you want to add to a given panel. So that's how we're going to add our panel to our frame. And then we're going to do panel.setLayout. Uh, new flow layout. Now, what this is doing is basically creating the structure for different elements that we add to our panel. So the flow layout means that when we, like, when we add a button or when we add a new element to our panel, it's going to be added from left to right. So our first button is going to be on the left, our second button is going to be on the right. And then when we run out of space on one line, it's going to go to the next line starting with the left and then the right. Think about it as like writing, uh, writing a paragraph or writing lines of text on a page. And that's what the flow layout does. There are multiple different types of layouts. We're not going to get into that in this, uh, in this tutorial or in this lesson. But you should know that that flow layout is one of them. And it's going to be, it's a pretty commonly used one. Now next, I'm going to get into actually creating our buttons. We're going to start by creating two buttons. We're going to say J button, uh, pop up button, equals new J button. And then we're going to specify the text on the button on the button. So open pop up. So actually, let's go ahead and fix this right here. So this has to have two parentheses in here. Um, but right here. Uh, so basically, that's going to be this button. And then we're going to create another button. And that's going to be called uh, new window button, because we're basically opening up a new window. So new window button. And the text on that is just going to be open new window. So we've got this right here, open new window and open pop up. Now what we want to do is specify the actions that are going to go with these uh, pop up buttons. So first, we're going to deal with our uh, pop up button. So the idea behind our pop up button is we can click open pop up and we see a pop up with a message. This is a pop up and a title pop up. And when we click OK, we can just kind of get out of it. So it's just basically, it is a pop-up with a certain message. So how we're going to do that is we're going to say um, pop-up button dot um, add action listener. So we're basically creating the ability for the pop-up button to hear or to um, to basically be able to detect a click on itself. So we have add action listener. And then inside, we're going to actually create a new action listener. And this is something called a, like it's, kind of, it's like a dynamic class. So it's called, a, basically what we're doing is we're creating a class in place. We're just creating a new class right here. And this class actually extends an interface. So there's certain methods that we should actually be able to create here. Um, and basically, we're going to do at override. And in this class that we're dynamically creating, we're going to create a new method. And that's going to be a public void action performed. Now, if this seems like if you can't understand this or seems crazy to you, it's actually not that important. Um, this code, you don't really need to understand how this code works. There is a certain part of this code you do need to understand, though, which I'll get to here in a second. So don't worry too much about this. Really, you just need to copy this code. So we're going to have public void action performed, and then action event e. 
and inside here. Um, right here is where we're going to specify what we want to happen when we click on this pop-up button. So in here, we're going to say um, J option pane dot show message dialog. And that show message dialog is basically uh, what is the pop-up. And there's going to be three parameters or four parameters. First, we're going to have uh, the frame that this originates from. So it's going to be this frame right here. Um, we're going to have the message that's going to be in the pop-up. This is a pop-up. We're going to have the title of the pop-up, so pop-up. And then we're going to basically tell what kind of message this is. So J option pane dot information message. So the, the pop-ups will look slightly different depending on the type of message, but this is just an informational message. Then we've got a semicolon. So if we compare what we have right here, we have open pop-up. This message goes right here. This is a pop-up. Title, and then information message, which is just some formatting. And this frame is the original frame that we created. We can say it's the origin frame. And that's basically it right there. Um, so our pop-up button is ready to go. Now we need to deal with our new window button. So we've got our, so we're gonna actually just copy this right here. We're not gonna type this again. I like all of this except for this part right here is just boilerplate code. And that's code that can just be copied and used over and over again. What we are gonna do is change this to new window button to correspond to our button. So we'll say new window button. And in here, what we're gonna do is we have our we have our original frame. So this frame in which we put our buttons in our panel, uh, but we want to create a new frame when we click open new window. And this is kind of a segue into creating more complex user interfaces, similar to what we'll create in future lessons. So what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna start by creating our new frame. So creating our next, our other frame in a new file. So right here, we're gonna do new Java class, new frame. And we're gonna create a new Java file. And this Java file is going to extend JFrame, meaning it's actually going to be a JFrame. So it's not like we're creating a JFrame separately, but this is literally going to be a JFrame. So when we create new frame, we're really creating a JFrame. And basically, I'm gonna write this code later, but what's going to happen when we click the new window button is we're just gonna say JFrame, uh, new frame equals new frame, basically just creating a new JFrame. And then we're gonna set it to visible so that it immediately displays. So we'll say a uh, new frame dot set visible and true. And okay. What we need to do though, so we have JFrame, new frame, we need to go ahead and write that class. So we need to write new frame. So we're gonna go back to new frame dot Java right here. And we're gonna create our constructor. So actually we need to import JFrame. So we need to import uh, Java X dot swing dot JFrame. So, and then we're gonna create our constructor, which is just gonna have the same name as our class. So we're gonna have public new frame. And inside there, we're gonna specify all the different characteristics of our frame. So we're gonna set a title and we'll just call it new window. Um, we'll set a size, so we'll just set it to a width of 200 and a height of 150. Um, oh, I gotta change that to set title. And then we're going to set location relative to null. Remember, this is what allows, us, allows the window to open up in the center of our screen. So null, and then set a default close operation. And we're gonna do something a little bit different here. If you remember on this line right here, we had exit on close, which meant when we click this exit button, it exits out of the application. But right here, basically what we're gonna do is, so when we click on open new window, we're opening this window and we wanna exit out of this without closing the whole application. So we wanna be able to hit exit, close this window, and then continue with the application. So right here, 
we're just going to have, uh, we're going to say jframe dot dispose on close. And this is going to be a static variable, and that's pretty much it. So we have our new frame. We've created our, our second frame. And right here, I think we're good to go. The last thing that we need to do is actually just make our original frame uh, visible. So actually, we need to do two things. First, we need to add these buttons to our panel. So it's closed up. OK, so we need to do panel. Uh, so that's this panel that we created right up here. That was kind of like a subcomponent going inside our frame. So we're going to do panel dot add button and add pop up button. And then we're going to do the same thing. And we're going to um, do panel dot add button. Or actually, we don't need to do add button. We can just do add. Uh, we're going to do panel dot add and then uh, new window button. And then we're going to set our frame, our original frame right up here to visible. So we got frame dot uh, set visible. And that's just going to be true. OK, cool. All right, so it doesn't look like we have any errors. So I'm going to go ahead and exit out of our sample application. And then I'm going to go ahead and just run our new application. So I'll just put my, I'll just highlight this. And I could actually click Run, or I can just click this green button right here, which is what I'm going to do. OK, and let's just make sure everything's working. Open pop-up. This is a pop-up. Put a new window. And we're good to go. And that brings us to the end of lesson two. Hope that was useful. Stay tuned for the next lesson.